and thank you for watching my video. As always, please like and subscribe, and if you have any questions or would like me to cover something else in greater depth or cover something I have not, please put it into the comments. Today I'm going to go over how to upgrade PHP IPAM from version 1.1 to version 1.6. This came up with a viewer who had a very old version of PHP IPAM, specifically version 1.1, and what I did in my lab to go from the database version 1.1 to 1.6. Now, I want to point out that I'm using a very current version of Rocky Linux 9.4, a current version of my SQL, and throughout parts of the video, mostly PHP version 8.3. At one point, I do have to downgrade and then re-upgrade to version 8.3. Also remember, the web server is really just a helper here to get the upgrade, get the upgrade of the database to be fast and easy. You can do all this from potentially the command line as well. Also, I want to point out that if you, if your PHP IPAM server is really old, use that as a reference. So export that old database and do not perform this procedure on your original server. Now, to get this going, I downloaded from SourceForge or Git the correct version of PHP IPAM that you want to upgrade and that matches your existing server release. So in my case that I got 1.1 from SourceForge because it's no longer existing on Git. But if you have to do one of the others, I believe 1.3 is in Git. So in this video I'm going to go over how to upgrade from Git from 1.1 to 1.3.2, then to 1.4, then to 1.5, and finally to 1.6. Note, I'm going a little long form here since I want to make this as simple and clear as possible. Some of you who know how to do this can skip certain steps but I am looking to make it as consistent for the beginner to the expert as possible. So let's begin. Now here you can see I have a 1.6. So I'm gonna log in. I'll show you what I have here. And as you can see, it's a working version. Now I'm gonna start over. So what does that mean? I'm going to use webmin because this will get it as fast as possible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything that exists for this 1.6 server. So I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to go over here to the server. I'm going to get rid of the database because this is a 1.6 database and I'm going to drop it. Okay, so now I have nothing in my web server, which is in my case at var www slash html. Now I've already downloaded and placed into this folder php ipam 1.1 and this is tar this is the ex expanded version and I'm going to copy these and I'm going to dump them into the html folder. Now, again, I want to point out, I can't get this server running. So I tried, um, I'm not going to waste my time on it because really what I want is the database. So to do this, I am going to now by SSH and make sure I'm on the right server. I am, let me expand this so you can see it a little better. Oh, we don't want to zoom in today, I guess. Let's see. There we go. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the database. So let's do this and my server's name. Now I'm going to create the PHP IPAM database that I just dropped from version.1.6. I'm also going to normalize this. So in the 1.1 database, it was a much older version. I'm just keeping this all the same throughout. And then I'm going to exit. Now the database is in here. So now I'm going to import that database. Okay. Now, let me get rid of this screen for you. What I'm going to do now is go back to my server and we should see the PHP IPM database. Now notice the number of tables is 20. So in here, right, in order to give you a sense of that I have some data, what I'm going to do is through the database, I'm going to just create some items. Okay, so like from the sections here, if I click here, right, I can view the data and then I can add a row. So I'm going to call it that and then I'm going to call it the tech guys guide section. I'm going to give it a description of the oops. I'm having a hard time typing. And the master section, I'm going to copy these permissions. So it's just going to be the same throughout. Uh, set these to null like above and show that and then save and close. So now I have a, I have some data in my database. If I go back here, um, I don't know, I could go and probably add a device. Let me add a user. We'll call, yeah, that's, that's always easy. So view data, I'm going to add a row. We're going to call it two. We're going to call it T Jones. His password. Um, we'll just make that null for now. He's in no groups. He's an admin, we'll say. Um, his real name is Tom Jones. Um, Uh, is he a domain user? We'll leave all that in there. That's fine. Favorite subnets, null. Edit date, we'll set that to null and save that. So now I have some data. So now I have some data. Now we get to delete some stuff. So I'm going to go back here to File Manager. As you can see, I'm in the HTML folder. I'm going to select everything in this folder and I'm going to delete it. Now, I'm not going to touch the database. Database is still here. See, it's right there. So now I'm going to go back to the command line and I'm going to go back to the top. Now I'm going to clone everything that I need to get to 1.3.2, which seemed to be the next closest working version that I could jump to from 1.1. And then I'm going to upgrade it like I would normally do from 1.53 to 1.6. And so I'm going to check out 1.3.2.
right? So now I'm using branch 132. Now I need to update the config file, right? Next, um, I need to make sure that we have the right information here. Now, as you can see, it's localhost. This is the all correct, so I don't need to modify that. So now, I'm going to go back over here to my web server where I was already logged in. I'm going to just refresh this. All right? So now I need to log in. And so that would be admin, which I think is the original one. And then it's like PHP admin, I believe. Oh, pause. Okay, so here we go. PHP item, I believe. Nope. Sorry about that. I had a. There we go. Now, so it's auto detecting that we need to update, right? So I'm going to upgrade the PHP IPAM database, right? It says that it's successful. I'm going to hit the dashboard now once a new password for the admin account. So I'm going to put in my new password and save it. I'm going to go to the dashboard. As you can see, I'm now at 1.3.2. Now, remember, I created that subnet, right? So here's this. And then if I go over to users, there's T. Jones. And then if I do a database verify, you'll see that everything is correct and updated to 1.32. So now that everything looks good, let's move on to the next step. So to do that, I'm going to go back to Webmin. I need to refresh because I just populated all this, right? And I'm actually going to delete all this again. And again, I want to point out there are a much more rapid way to do this. Uh, I don't want to do that. If you know how to do that, more power to you. Now make sure there's nothing else here. So now I'm going to go back to the command line and I'm going to do a CD and let's do this one more time. Okay, so now I'm going to go back here, and now I'm going to jump to and check out 1.4. So we need to do the config, right? And then we want to do a confirmation, right? So everything looks good, and we're all the same there. So now we want to go back to our web page and let's do a refresh. And this is one of the issues. So I'm on two new version for this version. So let's go back over here. And I want to do a DNF module reset. And I should put a Y in there. And then I want to revert to PHP 7.4. And if I do, once that's done, you'll see I'm on 7.4.3.3. So if I go back over here and I do a refresh on our server and I log in with my new password that I always remember, uh, and now it's going to ask me to do another update. And we're back at our dashboard. You'll see I'm over here. 
under the subnets, right? I this is a subnet I created in one one. The user Tom Jones is there, and then if I go down and verify database, there's no issues. So now that I'm done with that, right? Okay, one more time. So I'm going to go back here, and do a refresh on our var w. Now I'm going to select everything. And yes, because it's now getting bigger, I'm going to delete everything. And I'm going to refresh so there's nothing there. Now I'm going to go back to the command line. And I'm going to do another clone. And again, I want to stress, I know there's a faster way to do this, but I'm going long form with it because there are ways you could get messed up in this. So, okay. So now that that's done, I'm going to go there. Now I'm going to check out 1.5 so that we can update the database again. And then we're going to do the copy. And then in here, we do have to modify this because it changes. And we want to make this as clean as possible. So we do need to update the local host name. So now we're there. So let's go back here. If I do refresh, it's going to ask me to log in. Finally, at one, we're at version 1.5.3. We're going to upgrade the database. It's going to say I'm successful. As you can see, the data in the database is there. And then if I go down to here, there's the database has come back okay. So that's everything up to 1.53. Now, interestingly, we can just go back to the, we don't need to really do anything here, except now we can just do a straight upgrade to get to 1.6. So if I do a git checkout, you'll see we're now in 1.6. Um, if we need to double check our settings for this, and you can see it's at localhost. Now we do need to restore our configuration for PHP. And now that that's done, and we could do a PHP-V, we're on 8.3. So if I go back here and I do a refresh, right? I'm on 1.6. And everything went through correctly. My database looks good. My subnet looks good. So, oh, and our users, he looks good as well. Now, remember, I started with a 1.6 server, and I started over. So, that means everything in this test server was properly set up to move and migrate to 1.6. And that's the important thing to remember here. Well, I hope this made understanding how to upgrade from a very old version of PHP IPEM, specifically 1.1 to version 1.6, as clear and clean as possible for you. Finally, I wanted to thank you for watching my video, and as always, please like and subscribe and add some comments of what you liked or what else you would like to, me to cover. Have a great day. Thank you.